Hello friends, the Nobel Prize in Medicine 2025 was just announced less than 24 hours before. And in some ways, it is almost ironical that it took 117 years to disprove the prophecy of one of the towering figures of medicine, Paul Elric, who dominated medicine, pharmacology, the initial researches into cellular immunity in the early part of the 20th century. He was a great man. Paul Elric gave us the first ever treatment for an antibacterial disease when he, along with others, developed the treatment for syphilis in the form of silversen. But Paul Elric was of the firm belief that there was nothing called autoimmunity. Paul Elric was absolutely dogmatic about the fact that the body could not react upon its own cells, and that was impossible, and he had all kinds of thesis and terminology for it. Ever since then, scientists have been working silently, and it was somewhere in, uh, the, in the latter part of the 1920s that we first recognized the existence of autoimmune diseases. What are autoimmune diseases? Autoimmune diseases are those bizarre situations in which the body fails to differentiate between what is self and what is not itself. We have in our systems the central immunity system which is located in the lymphoid tissues and these central immunity systems are all the time producing cells like the T cells and the B cells who are constantly on the, on, on, on the vigil to, to pick up things which are foreign to us, whether they are infection, whether there are any other kind of foreign substances entering the body, and the body will set up its own intrinsic defensive mechanisms to protect itself. But there are situations, any mechanism, whether it is natural or man-made can break down. And when this central immunity system breaks down, there are situations in which the body fails to detect that there is something that belongs to itself and starts producing defense mechanism, the, the antibodies and other substances which is acting against itself. In the 1920s, it was first recognized in the case of thyroid disease. And later on, as time went on, we picked up other problems like Crohn's disease, various skin conditions, even type 1 diabetes, various forms of arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis, and it was absolutely clearly established that there are certain situations when the body produces antibodies against itself, causing these kinds of problems. But we had not worked out the precise mechanisms that what goes wrong in the system or look at it the other way, what goes right in the system, in the great majority of us, the body is protecting us from this autoimmune phenomenon. And there was an idea in the mind of many scientists that there will be cells in the immune system which is preventing the body from, from inciting a rebellion against itself. And it is here where scientists like Sakaguchi comes in. Shimon Sakaguchi, who is one of the recipients of this year's Nobel Prize on the uh, spectrum of autoimmunity, has been working on this for a good part of last 30 years. And Sakaguchi was one of the first people who hypothesized, who had the idea that the body had certain type of cells called the T-reg or the T-regulator cells. And the T-regulator cells were preventing the body from damaging itself. So ever since the work of Dr. Sakaguchi in Osaka, 
There were scientists all over the world who were doing more detailed research into autoimmunity. And we had the likes of Dr. Fred Ramsdale, who was based out of Illinois, and Mary Brankov, who was based out of Portland, Oregon, who put more details and who were able to identify with clarity the more specific steps in identifying precisely the T regulator cells and the genetic mechanisms involved by which the T regulator cells are on a constant watch out and preventing our own immunity from turning rebellious. It's been a great moment for medicine. And it is a work that has been gone or going on for a good part of last 30 years. Dr. Sakaguchi, based out of Osaka, is no young man. He's almost 75 years of age, and he was absolutely surprised that when, in recognition of the various breakthroughs in autoimmunity, he was hailed as a pioneer. Dr. Ramsdale and Mary Brankow, who are based out of United States, were equally surprised because it was not very likely that this year autoimmunity will come into that kind of prominence. There are a couple of more interesting facts. The first Nobel Prize was given out in 1901, and the Nobel Prize in Medicine, remember, is not decided by a group of non-medical person. It is not decided by a group of know-alls who are linked to politics or some dissociated domains. The Nobel Prize in Medicine is decided by a committee based out of the Karolinska Institute. And Karolinska Institute is one of the most reputed medical institute of the world. Ever since 1901, Nearly 240 people have received the Nobel Prize in Medicine, which is also called the Nobel Prize in Medicine and Physiology. And out of the 240 odd recipients, only 14 women have ever received it. So Mary Brankow's achievement is absolutely outstanding. Mary Brankow, based out of Portland, Oregon, works for a company which is called Systems Biological. She does not belong to the hardcore academic domain like most other Nobel recipients. She's been a silent researcher working in a private organization. For that matter, Dr. Ramsdale is also working in a private organization called Simona Biologicals based out of Illinois. But Mary Brankow's achievements is absolutely singular. For a low profile, non-hardcore academic and a woman to get recognized for her breakthrough work in which she identified the gene called FOXP3, which was responsible for all the deviations in autoimmunity. So congratulations to all of them, and a special congratulations to Mary Brankow for making it. This will make possible various breakthroughs in autoimmune diseases. Diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, diseases like type 1 diabetes. It will also help people to understand the immunological mechanisms involved in transplantation and various aspects of anti-cancer therapy will also benefit from the path-breaking work of this trial. The world remains grateful to the Karolinska Institute and to the, to the three musketeers in the form of Dr. Sakaguchi, Fred Ramsdell, and Mary Brankow, and we wait for many more such path-breaking events in medicine that will make treatment even more effective. Thank you ever so much.